strong here. I must leave. Goblins don't exist. Goblins don't exist. And remember. Welcome to the latest episode of the podcast that wouldn't die. I'm your host, Kevin. With me, as always, is Aaron. Troll after troll. Each week on the podcast that wouldn't die, we discuss guilty pleasures and forgotten classics from the horror and sci-fi genres. And we discuss them with a little comedic twist, if you will. This week, we'll be discussing the horror classic Troll 2, starring some goblins. There's a lot of wrong with what you just said. There. <laughs> I, I think if you check, it is entirely factually accurate. <laughs> Double check it. Google it. Classic. Google it, I say. Classic? Not classic. Frankly, not horror. And definitely no trolls. So we're all for three. Very upsetting. Very, very upsetting. Now, <laughs> what's going on with you, Aaron? For God's sakes. Nothing. I came Same home old. and ate tapioca and then watched Better Call Saul. And I mean, by three o'clock, I was in my bathroom. What's going on? Can with I you? tell you something? Better? Something better than that. I will tell you this. I love tapioca. Controversial decision. I don't know. I, tapioca is 100%. And I've been mean, craving it. And there was some uh, for only a four pack for a dollar on discount clearance at Smart and Final. So I took it as a sign. I mean, some people reach for the rice pudding. Rice no. pudding's fine, but I always no. go strive for the tapioca. There's something fascinating about the the texture, and it's not it's, made with it's, rice. No, yeah, if it's made with some it, other thing. It's it's made with tapioca, like the it's the balls like a boba tea. That's tapioca. It's just they're giant. <laughs> Maybe I've been missing out. I need giant tapioca balls. Like, Boba's like the size of a small marble. Except it's yes. soaked in tea versus tapioca is like, you know, milk and sugar and eggs. That is true. No, I love tapioca. Yeah. I, you can't go wrong. Can't go 100%, 100%. wrong. 100%. So <laughs> that being said, Aaron, give us a 30-second synopsis of Troll 2. Well, it apparently starts off with Will Ferrell from uh, Elf prancing through a forest and is intercepted by trolls. And then it's like smash cut to, uh, is it the Never Ending Story where Grandpa's reading a story to the kid? And Oh, no, that's... Princess uh, Bride. Princess, Princess Bride. Princess Bride. Princess Bride, where, where Uncle Grandpa is reading kitties a story. Whoops, Uncle Grandpa's dead. And shows up uh, to give, like, unhelpful advice throughout uh, the family's adventures. All I can tell you, I fell asleep three times. And I am no Kevin. I usually am able to monitor myself and stay awake from a movie. I fell asleep so and, and of course it's the the traditional 90 minutes but uh let, let's just say uh the humans won out over the paper mache Ewoks. Now I have to say and I mentioned this before each week on Twitter I send out Saturday I always send out hey send us any movie suggestions. And one of our one of our homies on Twitter a fellow podcaster your next, the host of your your next favorite podcast, I might add, says, "I'm going to keep saying Troll Two every week until you do it. I, I'm so not giving I, up I on this." I was going to say, "Is it another podcast?" Because clearly they're effing with us. Because I <laughs> swear to you, between that suggestion and our cousin's doppelganger uh, suggestion, I don't know what's happening. It's it's yes, they're trying to torpedo us. Is they're basically what it is. Down. Now, here's here's the, the cold, hard reality. I had heard of Troll 2. I had heard of it. And I knew I know exactly what I was walking into 
with this one. You had no idea. You you thought that we were watching Lawrence of Arabia or something. I'll tell you were mistaken. You what, it made Krampus look like Lawrence of Arabia. This is true. This is absolutely true. <laughs> no, obviously, this is the first time either one of us uh, have seen this movie. And you hadn't even heard of it. Is that correct no. prior to this? No. It looked like it was made for TV for, like, Canada. Why? I think they all seem to be Canadian. Absolutely. So let me tell you a little background. And I mentioned this on our previous episode. A little background about Troll 2. Mid-80s, the time of video stores, your parents would just go grab some videos on the way home. Oh, Kevin, this looks kind of fun. I grabbed this off the video store. You know, never heard of it. Well, I've already I've already oh, donated my oh. money, so we're watching it tonight. So you're saying mom and dad swung by the warehouse and picked up Troll 2 for you and said, here you go, Kevy. This you act like this didn't happen. This is the sort of thing that happens. I don't recall if this is specifically what happened for Troll. For the original Troll, I'm talking about. So, but I had seen the original Troll multiple times in the mid 80s. You know, it's it's a bizarre film in and of itself and not particularly heralded. I mean, the main character was the guy who played a Treyu in Never Ending Stories. So this is two years yeah, after Never Ending right. Stories. Whatever did happen to him? He was a pretty little boy. Close I think he's a tattoo artist these days. Oh, so the meth kind of tore up his face? Is that no, <laughs> no, he, okay, I'm not, I'm not trying to besmirch. Allegedly. His name's Noah Hathaway. Yeah, allegedly. allegedly. Who's to say? So anyway, he's he's the young boy. His parents move into a new apartment or whatever. And somehow a troll escapes and starts wrecking havoc in the in the uh, building. But it's bizarre because you've got Sonny Bono is in it. Is he the troll? Uh, he's not the troll, sadly. <laughs> uh, uh, who else is in it? Julia Louis-Dreyfus. You, like this is just after she left Saturday Night Live and far before she was on Seinfeld. Uh, June Lockhart, who played uh, the mom on Lassie, was in this. And I, I'm sure Michael Moriarty played the father. It's an all star cast. June uh, Lockhart was in one of the space movies. Wasn't she the one uh, with uh, Robbie the Robot, the series Lost in Space? <laughs> She might have been on Lost in Space as well, but I, I remember her from Lassie. Right. But again, both shows from 90 years ago that no one knows what the hell we're talking no, about. No. So anyway, not a Herald. It wasn't like it was, a, you know, sweeping the nation. Everybody's talking about troll, troll, troll. Tell have the world. Troll? Have you seen Father, Father <laughs> Mc, uh, McNurtz? Have you seen Troll? <laughs> Drop what you're doing and hit the theaters. Frank, I don't even know if Troll hit the theaters. Uh, anywho, not a heralded film. Several years later, I'm talking like four or five years later, uh, ultra low budget movie that deals not with trolls, but with goblins. Okay. Total low budge. And when it was time to distribute the movie, the distributors were like, we're not releasing this as goblins, okay? We're going to call it Troll 2 to try to cash in on that, <laughs> on that piping hot troll zeitgeist that's sweeping the nation. So, Kevin, okay? I think we need to yes. really clarify. And what is the difference between a troll and a goblin, oh, master of the universe? Well, according to Dungeons and Dragons, they're they're very different. They're very different. Even if you go back and look at like Lord of the Rings, uh, the goblins are the characters chasing little Bilbo around in the caverns or whatever, and the trolls are the big things that turn to stone uh, after they try to eat the dwarves. Does that help you? No, I thought trolls not helpful. The bridge, but when I was in Iceland, there was a giant troll at one of the seaports as like a watchman for the sailors. A stone. That's troll. oh well, not a stone troll. I thought he was just some dude who people referred to as a troll. It was Bilbo That's Baggins. just not cool. It might have been Bilbo himself. <laughs> Anywho, 
The point, but what makes it bizarre and freakish is the movie's called Troll 2, but no time during the entire movie does anyone say the word troll. Not once. All the creatures we meet, which actually resemble the creature from the original Troll movie, are only referred to as goblins. <laughs> Even though they call it, maybe they thought it was interchangeable. What's a hobgoblin, oh, professor? My understanding is a hobgoblin's the larger, angrier cousin of a goblin. Oh, you mean like a standard schnauzer versus a miniature schnauzer? That is correct. That's my understanding. <laughs> this, this is neither here nor there. Let's, you know what? We're going off a, a rail here. Let, why don't we jump right in and hit the highlights, no, if you will? Man, Aaron, it was Will Ferrell from Elf at the very beginning being chased by trolls. 100%. He wishes he was Will Ferrell, first of all. Well, first of all, Elf ripped off, you know, all our... Troll too? <laughs> no, Elf ripped, ripped off uh, Rudolph and all the Rankin Bass stuff we used to watch at Christmas time. It was an homage, not a ripoff. That's why, because they don't have to write the check. So what came first, Elf or Troll 2? Elf came out... 15 years after Troll 2? Troll 2 is like 1990. So Troll 2 ripped off Rankin Bass with the Hermes costume first. But because <laughs> no one actually saw that or ever heard of it, there was no lawsuit. It was clearly That's Will true. Ferrell, and I will slap you when I see you next if you try to argue that. Okay, Good. tell us the scene. Don't just tell us crazy <laughs> Will Ferrell running around the forest. <laughs> Feral, dressed as freaking elf comes hopping through the forest and the trolls are there they're trying to right, get he's him. running from the trolls he's running from the trolls he has green slime dripping on his head and he does some kind of a barrel roll a somersault if you will and cracks his head on the ground and when he awakes there's kind of a c plus b minus pinup girl standing in front of him with drawn-on freckles. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Who hands him a bowl of green slime. And he is so uh, entranced by her quote-unquote beauty that he promptly slugs down the the slime. The slime is the color uh, of, I guess, uh, neon lime jello. <sighs> Okay, I, as a child of the 80s, there was a show on Nickelodeon called You Can't Do That on Television. And if you ever said, it's a Canadian show, it as, looks, as you might imagine. It smells Canadian. I know it's filmed in, in Utah, but it smells Canadian. But maybe it's the Utah that's rubbing off. I don't know. So on You Can't Do That on Television, if you ever said, I don't know, green slime would drop out of a bucket and land on your head. That's what this stuff looked like. Green. It was like kind of oatmeal-y, kind of pudding-y. It was like a weird combination, but you're right. It was neon green slime, essentially, which there's a lot of scenes of people like eating like gross green slime in this movie. It is Good true. times. Uh, I think that uh, the trolls are clearly stupid. Because if they weren't so obvious, they could probably uh, liquefy more humans. We have to talk. Okay, so tell us the the goblins' evil plan. What are they trying to do? Basically, they just need you to eat some of the slop, the soylent green, you might say. Yes. And, and it immediately starts liquefying you, or you become a plant. I'm not sure. It depends on whatever the vibe is of the moment. Uh, but if That's they liquefy correct. you, they come along and, and scoop you up and just drink you because they're savages. They said something along the lines of that the goblins are vegetarians. And they need to turn unsuspecting humans into chlorophyll or something along those lines uh, you know you can just go to the supermarket and get plant all the vegetables you want you do not have to hatch this nefarious plan which includes tricking unsuspecting travelers to eat green slop right to convert meat 
into chlorophyll, you can buy that blue green algae. Like, like eat a teaspoon of that. Yeah, it makes no sense. They're alone in the forest, but nothing but plants all around them. And they talk around uh, how how we're savages and, and eat eat meat and everything. And it makes them ill thinking about it. Yet they're going. To That's eat. correct. They're going to eat us. And why are some people become trees? <sighs> This happens. There is a girl that is met that runs from the fo- in the middle of the forest spontaneously. We don't know who she is, where she's from. She drinks a little bit of this stuff and like basically just instantly liquefies into, into slop on the floor. Other homie drinks some and promptly like she plants him in a pot and he starts turning into a tree. Yeah. So I don't I don't know the science Literally, behind no it. No one I, else I, becomes a plant. That's correct. Yes, it makes, oh God, it, it makes absolutely no sense. Let's talk about the bizarro subplot of is little Billy hallucinating or is he being haunted by his dead grandfather? Well, the most fascinating part is when they're interacting, the grandfather never appears to be directly looking at him. He always seems to be looking over his shoulder, possibly at his cue cards. Uh, yes, but he never see. There is no. It's like almost like they were shot at different times and then put together for these scenes, because you're like, you, it's like you want to move and look over his shoulder. What's he looking at? Because <laughs> it's not looking at the kid in front of him. <laughs> yes, Stevie Wonder maintains better eye contact than than old Grabs from Beyond the Grave. It was so um, bizarre. The acting was so bizarre. Uh, I literally was in theater in high school. We used to go to these theater festivals where you thought you were on effing Broadway. The production value was amazing. This is not it. No, uh, like 10 minutes in, I literally wrote down the acting exclamation point, exclamation point, because, okay, number one, the script is written in a very bizarre fashion. Like people speak in ways that no human would ever speak. And it's delivered in ways that boggle the mind. Cause it's, it is literally the worst acting you would ever see. Oh, you know what I mean? Where it's literally like high school productions, yeah, I've junior high productions are better than high this school production. I don't want to insult high schools, junior high production. It's, it's, uh, it is boggling. It is. And it, but, and it smacks you over the head. Cause you're just like, can nobody act in the state of Utah? Nobody's even trying. They couldn't find anybody. I, I, it was, I it, it's literally. I, I mean, I don't mean to be Go racist. Ahead. All I kept thinking is, are they Canadian? <laughs> I don't know if that's racist, but we'll take it. Uh, no, it's. I can't stress enough that the acting is, I mean, they cannot string two words together in a believable way. You know, they're, they're not, act, they're not asking for, you know, the final like citizen Kane, you know what I mean? It's like, <sighs> it's almost like okay. they're ad libbing, except for the fact that the grandfather is clearly reading cue cards behind the child. That's all I can come up yes. with. It's like curb your enthusiasm. Only you've removed all the talented people, and and it's just like at a church barbecue or something. That's the level because it makes as much sense. Oh, absolutely. And then you had to. I mean, there's the- Bible camp. Uh, do the troll masks. That's exactly, that's exactly right. We have to talk about that. So the acting, okay, stipulated, acting horrendous. The masks that the goblin goblins wear range from kind of a dime store rubber mask to a ridiculous paper mache summer camp is what we're talking about. And, one and, of, and some one of the troll, that they made five masks. Because one troll also yes. has paper mache eyeballs, which makes no sense. Yes. Again, and after they've killed all the trolls, you still see that same mask when, when a couple have escaped. Even though you saw the That's one correct. the eyeballs melt. <laughs> because they only bu- made five masks, they had to bring it back later. 
Yes, they were horrible, ridiculous masks, and the costumes for the goblins seemed to be just burlap sacks. Throw on an old burlap sack, put on this paper mache mask, and let's get on with this, is basically the mantra of this movie. Ewoks, if George Lucas only had $1.50 for each Ewok for the entire costume and makeup. Well, this is important because I saw The Phantom Menace 100 years ago. And in that that was the first uh, new movie where George Lucas was like, it's all going to be, you know, kind of digital. All the aliens are going to be digital. All the stuff is going to be digital. But what you would see in, in the crowds, anybody who wasn't digital would be wearing clearly like off the rack, you know, Halloween masks in the background. Right like... There? <laughs> I would have gotten away with it if it wasn't for you meddling kids. Um, well, <laughs> that's basically what it is. It's like, don't pay too close attention. But obviously, this movie wishes they had that qual- quality and caliber of mask. Um, okay, stipulated. Production quality, lousy. Acting, lousy. Writing, lousy. Let's talk about specifics. The trifecta. It is the trifecta. And then um, the, so okay. Stevie Nicks, the queen of the queen of the trolls. How she? Oh, her. she wishes she was Stevie. There Nicks. There was one scene where she's <laughs> she's all gussied up, and I swear to you, it looked like Stevie Nicks. Uh, with the one year she was on American Horror Story. Is that what it was? <laughs> she, <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, see your gypsy. Uh-huh. Anyway. Um, so, okay, yes. So let's let's talk about uh, the uh, Goblin Queen who pops up every now and again and mugs to the camera like she's Bill Cosby. Ridic- constantly looking, looking at the camera like Mr. Furley. I keep saying Mr. Furley. Mr. Roper did the looks at the camera. She is like, got like weird streaks in her hair and like got some crap on her teeth to show that she's like an old like, which woman or, or something along those lines and the way she delivered the, okay, we don't want to hammer the acting, but it, it was ridiculous. Now there is a scene where she, uh, she this- touches Stonehenge. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the popcorn. I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah, I'm getting there. <laughs> I'm getting there. So for some reason she touches the Stonehenge blocks, turns herself into a B minus <laughs> Goes from, B minus Stevie Nicks. A B minus, yes. Uh, goes from a D minus, exactly, to seduce. Uh, go to seduce one of the dudes who rolled up in the Winnebago. We haven't even talked about any of the characters. We're just jumping right in, and she has a corn cob in her hand. Why? Who in the hell knows? And she goes and seduces the guy with the corn cob, and they're both eating the corn cob at the same time in kind of a sexy way. Oh, she looks like she's going um, to shove it up her hoo because I literally wrote down, is she going to masturbate with corn? Because she's putting it in her pocket, she's rubbing it on herself, then she's rubbing it on him, then she leaps on top of them with corn in her mouth, like Scrappy-Doo, and then they're both yes! nod on it, and then... The heat of their friction and their passion causes it to pop or no, he's like, I like popcorn. turns into popcorn. I like popcorn. She's like, we just need to add a little heat. <laughs> I was like, Oh geez. There's the look, the scene where they both have the corn cob in their mouth. I had to turn off. I had to turn off the TV at one point just because somebody walking in there'd be like, Kevin, what in the hell are you watching? We have children in the house. Right. It was that kind of scene. It was unclean. <laughs> it was unclean. Like, oh, and, and this is not the first time in the movie corn pops up. It's like they went to the grocery store. It's probably the same corn from the beginning of the movie when they do the, the when the family, the family does a house swap out in the country and the country people yes. go to their city house and they get the country house and all this food is laid out, including corn with like a strip of that ink <laughs> toothpaste, that gel green t- toothpaste. Yes, that is correct. Um, okay. Yeah. We let's, we, we, oh, sweet Jesus. So there's the, there's the, the family, there's the parents, there's the, the younger brother 
There's the sister and the ghost grandfather who lurks around as well. And that, like and you said, like they're doing three a three dudes in a Winnebago uh, track them uh, because of the floozy daughter. They're like, we're just going to be the, right outside. This is the craziest thing of all. So the teenage daughter has a boyfriend who wants to come on the family trip. And the folks are like, cool, come on, come with us. And for some reason, he doesn't show up on time. So the, every, the whole family's pissed off that he doesn't show up on time. So instead, he gets a Winnebago. He, he, get, he shows up with a Winnebago and like a bunch of his loser buddies who they've already established they all hate. They hate all of his friends. Yeah. So it's like choose between us. So they follow them onto this family vacation to the city of Nilbog. I was like, Nilbog. Why is it called Nilbog, because Aaron? It's goblin spelled backwards. <laughs> not troll. I like that line delivery. <laughs> it's not troll. Because it's, it's goblin spelled backwards. <laughs> what would troll be spelled backwards? Lord. <laughs> Lord, exactly. Uh, my God, sweet my Jesus! God, my God, oh why God, help you me! Forsaken me. That's correct. <laughs> so, okay, we have to talk about this. So, while they're driving, while the family's driving to Nilbog because they did a, <laughs> a house swap, um, he has a the little kid has a vision that grandfather's sitting on the side of the road. So he he feigns that he's going to get sick. So they pull over and he probably jumps out of the car and runs all the way down. Grandpa, grandpa. And a, a, a filthy hobo turns to like, what do you want with me? And we need to mention that the kid looks like Billy Mommy's uh, younger brother. <laughs> From Lost in Space. And it all which, comes back together. Away into the cornfield. That is correct. Yeah, from the Twilight Zone. That was a good episode, that was by one the of way. The best. Um, Why don't we have a sweet podcast Jesus. Is it- where we discuss all the Twilight Zone episodes? I think people do that. Bastard. People do that. I think there is a Twilight Zone. Bastard. Yeah, there's there's a podcast for anything you might desire. I um, so the parents think that porn? little, is there a podcast for that? That, that might be a niche that we could fill. <laughs> um, that might be, there well, may be an opening. Movie. For... <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So the parents think that the little kid is lost his mind. And at one point they say to him, Billy, or whatever his name is, you need to banish your grandpa from your mind. It's like, really? I understand you could say, stop hallucinating, kid. Get it together. But literally, I know your grandfather just died last week. Never think of him again. That sounds like... Never think of him! That's the outline for Exorcist 4, I think. (laughs) Explain, please. We were just, what is happening? We were discussing time after time, and they'd gone to the movies and the movie time after time, and it said it was playing Exorcist Four. Oh, so that's what correct. I'm saying, that's the correct. joke is always funnier when you have to explain it. Uh, so what I'm saying is yes. Exorcist Four is uh, they, they try to exercise crazy grandpa from the house. Couldn't They're hurt possessing the small child. Absolutely. <laughs> and okay. So later in the movie, I love this scene. Like you said, they, they switched houses. They go in there and the outgoing family have left a bunch of crazy food all over the table. It's all kind of greenish because of course it's obviously yep. got that green slime in it. Go ahead. Kevin, like if you're doing a house swap, wouldn't you even go inside? Before these people drive off to go, uh, I don't know, take a dump in your living room, <laughs> pull, an, pull an Amber Heard, I don't know. Wouldn't you right. at least go inside to see what this house looked like that you are uh, going to be living in for your vacation? For a month, right. 
Well, I don't know. How does it work? Because they, they do have these kind of house swap deals. How do you know you're not, you're not flicking your, your house keys to the sex pistols? Who are going to go in there and defile every orifice? <laughs> Honestly, I mean, I guess you don't know because they were doing this before the internet was, it was as, you know, before it was Airbnb and vacation rental bio. I guess you just take a leap of faith and think about people's reviews, I guess. Yep. I, I mean, I guess that's what you do. Um, anywho, so they, they leave a whole spread and the family's about to sit down and eat the stuff. But of course, Ghost Gramps appears and says, stop them. Don't let them eat. They'll turn into goblins, whatever you do. And what is little Billy's plan to stop the family from eating the food, Aaron? Do you remember? You've got to remember. So ridiculous. He climbs on frickin' the table and pisses all <laughs> over it. But it's so stupid because Ghost Grandpa freezes them. He could have literally just removed the food from their hams because they could still have been taking a bite because most of them had the food pressed to their lips. So he's decided just to <laughs> piss on the table. You could have just grabbed the tablecloth. What? I don't even. That, that was so bizarre. Quite frankly, the way they were acting, I thought he took a dump on the table. I, I guess he, he, it was a whiz bag. But you're, you're right. They, we don't actually see the 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 kid no. pissing all over the place. He thank goodness. Up and, and undoes his fly. His undoes his fly. And that's, that's all you see. Then smash cut. They're they're doing the dishes. Basically, damn it. But you're right. They had food touching their... Did he just piss all over his whole family? I mean, that's the only way you're, you're getting... Right up. Piss, the, piss the dad's eye. Sorry, sis. <laughs> and at one point, they're like... Because we're... Go ahead. He's like six. How much has he got in there? Because he's got the hose on the table and then everything in everyone's mouth because it's pressed to the lips. So the food they're holding was obviously not been pissed on. <laughs> well, one could hope. Uh, maybe that makes them lose their appetite. Not to mention that the room would be defiled. Not just that, I mean, this isn't outside on a picnic table. This is in the living room. So the whole room. How much juice, how much juice does an eight-year-old have? He had a big gulp Mountain Dew five minutes earlier. He was ready to rock. Um, shake and bake. Shake and bake. <laughs> now, right after this scene, they're kind of like, you know, Billy... I, we, I don't remember what his name is. They're like, you need to go to your room. And at one point, the dad's like taking him up to his room. And you see, hear the mom shouting, don't hit him. Don't, <laughs> don't hit him. I know this is the 80s, but to just be so casual, it's like, clearly you've beaten our child in the past. But maybe this time. Well, it, it is the 80s. So that's just, if you're not beating your kid, you're a bad parent in the 80s. That is true. That's spare the rod, spoil the child is what they say. And I believe it, frankly. And then quite frankly, he doesn't even do anything. He just sets them down. You need to think about this. Think about not peeing and all then, over us. <laughs> otherwise, I'm going to come in while you're sleeping. I'm going to pee on your bed. It's a family what tradition. Do you think about that? Junior. Junior. <laughs> Junior. Oh, sweet. What else you got? Did the mom kind of look like the chick from uh, Six Feet Under, an American Horror Story? A little bit. But with imagine, imagine her with red hair. Uh, yes. I'm not and she only had eyeliner on her lower lids and only like halfway across for the entire movie. Perhaps she was doing her own. Makeup. It was the style of the 80s, if I remember correctly, when you're on Coke. You just kind of figure out, <laughs> you just do the best you can with your shaky hands. Um, no, no, no. She, de she vaguely resembles the woman from Six Feet Under in American Horror Story after a massive head wound, clearly. A head wound, <laughs> yeah. And she seemed to be much older. Maybe it's like a relative or something. And then the, the husband seemed vaguely familiar. They're like the Canadian version of American actors. Like, is there a Canadian who kind of looks like Billy Mummy? And is there a Canadian who kind of looks like the chick from American Horror Story and Six Feet Under? I want to reiterate, none of these actors are Canadian. They're, they're homegrown, Utah, lousy ass actor. That's what that's what, we don't have to import I them. The I think it's the same. I mean, 
Lord knows, Lord knows, there's a, a small, a small group of of good Canadians. It's just that we don't see that many of them. They would rather import uh, actors from Australia, New Zealand than to, uh, to visit our friends from the north. This seems like a personal attack against all of our fine Canadian listeners. And I, and I, don't, I won't stand for it. It's an attack it. against Canadians. It's an attack against people from Utah. I've got all the bases covered. Absolutely. I mean, look, the finest actors you'll ever see can be found in Degrassi Junior High, in Anna Green Gables, the the Cana- all the Canadian frankly you can't do that on television all the finest Canadian shows SCTV uh, well, Eugene Levy absolutely Catherine O'Hara and all the gang from SCTV Shit's Creek then you have all the Shit's Creek yep. you have all the fine people the Christopher Guest people I mean the, the list goes course. on and on. And th- I think one of the dudes from Better Call Saul is French Canadian Nacho. If you if you're familiar with Better Call Saul, Nacho met his reward this. A season. spoiler alert! Thanks a but, lot. Uh, French Canadian. Um, let's see. What was up with the crazy rotten milk that was everywhere? See, that's what I'm saying. Trolls are dumb. No, humans don't want to eat your uh, clotted milk. And it seems sexual to me. I don't know. It was it was gross. I was like, it was like troll milk. I was like, mm-hmm. well, it, it happens. You milk and a troll. <laughs> don't ask. Don't ask. Don't ask. I, I was hoping it, it would just stay at that kind of clean Canadian level. <laughs> there, multiple. There's no swearing. That's true. Multiple times they go and be like. I went in the cupboard and all that was there was all this milk and they pour it. And it's literally like yogurt just pouring out there. One homie is drinking it right out of the carton in the middle of the forest before he realizes, Hmm, the fact that it's warm and it's thick, maybe I shouldn't be drinking this. What do you, he finally (laughs) talks. Everybody's had milk. That's gone one little too far. Or I mean, it looked like yogurt. I once, had a gallon of whole milk rolled around the back of my Chevy Lumina that I forgot was there. And one day, cause that trunk was so large, I always had stuff. So one day I was digging stuff out of my car and there was a gallon of milk of those plastic jugs. And it was so distended. It was like a tick ready to pop. And it, and it looked like a science experiment. <laughs> Because it was like layers. This is all I need to know. Thank you. <laughs> various. Thank you. I, I guess that would be what you would call troll milk. So there are trolls in the Bay Area because that's when that took place. At the very least, goblins, if not trolls. I, I hooked it out with with the hook of my umbrella and abandoned it at a Lucky's parking lot. Or... Not in a trash can, just in a stall for somebody to discover to their I horror. I was afraid it was going to go off. I was, I, uh, those poor kids, at least they had the union. Just so detonate. Boom. For that. <laughs> it was going to go. Let me let me tell you this. This movie deals with the stolen uh, stones from Stonehenge. But this is not the first movie we've done that dealt with the stolen stones from Stonehenge. Do you know what the other movie is? I just want to say that I've been to Stonehenge. And in fact, the stolen stones from Stonehenge (laughs) are not four feet tall. Also, uh, it goes to 11. How about that? That involves the stolen stones from Stonehenge. That's not what I... But what have we reviewed? The movie we reviewed where an evil person has stolen one of the stolen stones of Stonehenge and he's using it for their evil plans is none other than Halloween 3. Season of the Witch. Season of the Witch! I I thought you were going to give me like a series of unfortunate events, uh, something or other. No! Yeah, Season of the Witch. The evil... Once again... The stones of Stonehenge are not the size that uh, Spinal Tap was using or Goblins 2. That They're is much true. Taller. They're much taller. But they, I, I think the ones from Halloween 3 are more uh, realistic. 
And even when he turns them into little microchips that he installs into Halloween masks to melt children's brains, it's all just good science. Effective. Can and we? What are the stones in this movie? What the hell? Why were they touching them? And what the hell did that have to do with anything? The family had to touch them, and then. Yes. So earlier in the movie, the evil goblin queen is using it for her magic powers. I guess that's how she changes her appearance. And just by touching it. Yes. Now initially. Uh, the little boy is able to ward off the goblins by eating a bologna sandwich. So that was yes. important. A, a quadruple bologna. It was like Kathy Valenze would fry bologna and stack it up and then put it on some white bread. That's what it looked like. That's what it was. I'm sure. They're able to ward off the goblins that way. And then when the family arrives, they all, including the, the boyfriend, they run over and put their hands on the stolen stones of Stonehenge and concentrate. You've got to concentrate. And that causes... harder! Harder! Yes, that kid was working. I mean, he's not a good actor, but you could tell he was throwing himself into this role. He was busting his ass trying to get something out of this. It was his and, last chance. And then I have to talk about... So the very end of the movie, you think everything's cool. They're back home. Everything's fine. Oh, sorry. Mom's dead. She is, she was turned into goo in the shower. Oh well, did, such is life. Did you even for a moment consider that the fruit was not poison? <laughs> even for a moment, the minute you saw the fruit, you knew it was poison, right? I honestly, at that point, I was pretty much checked out. I, I, I was. <laughs> they could have handed me some poison fruit at that stage of the game. It would have been fine. Yeah. Well, well, and Sleeping Beauty, it would have knocked you out, and that, it, that's a way of end, ending the suffering. But at how, least but the audiences. The Earlier on, they had to put the gel toothpaste all over it. So did their technology improve in 48 hours? They kind of, when she's eating the apple when they're home, it just looks like a regular old apple. When they cut to it later after she's been liquefied, it's clear like, here's an apple with a bite out of it that I've now put some aqua fresh all over it. <laughs> oh, she no. Noticed when they got home, she opened the fridge. There was nothing but gallons of, of uh, troll seed or troll <laughs> milk. Or was, it, was it really? I, see, that's... Yeah. Are you, <laughs> troll seed. No, it, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but it's all bad. Don't drink it. Don't drink it. Whatever you do. Don't drink it. Do not. Any last thoughts before we move on with our, uh, with this? Here are my thoughts. This is literally the least funny podcast we've ever done. Because there's just not that much funny. It's just like, oh, uh. What I wonder what's on Facebook. Oh, look, my mom liked a post from six years ago. That's nice. <laughs> look, it, it's it's not a good movie by any stretch of the imagination. I will stipulate it. But I think I enjoyed it a little more than you did. A little more. I not think. like, let me, let me spread the word about it. But uh, you have to kind of luxuriate in the ridiculousness of it. Because the... No one has human reactions. No one says things that humans would say. Yeah, and there are goblins wearing paper mache masks. So, good times. The only way I would have liked this is if I had actually known the people. Like, this would have been funny if it was literally our family doing it. That would have been a crack up. But it would only be funny to us. So, this is probably only funny to people in Utah and their extended Mormon family. So... So you're saying if this was Blood House, then we'd be in business. No one knows what we're talking How many about. Times we talked. We talked about Crazy Blood House, which is a, a crazy film uh, my brother's friends filmed in our backyard one weekend when my parents were out of town, and it's only funny because because you know we know everybody in it. So exactly. I think this is it. Yeah, it did not go this to, to Sundance. To Johnny Depp and Tim Burton. And they just, by the end, Tim Burton and Johnny Depp were like, yeah, and then we'll get this guy. It'll be a hoot. They'll give us $100 million. We could, we could have, like, 
evacuated people, uh, refugees in the Middle East, and and uh, solved the Ukrainian process. But screw it, let's just make another Pirates of the Caribbean nineteen. Woohoo! Exorcist four. Shall we go behind the scenes? <laughs> I hope there's some uh, behind the scenes because there was nothing in front of the scenes. There's a lot. There was actually uh, a documentary made about this movie oh. called Best Best Worst Movie. You have to check it out. So here we go. That's a lie. First That's of all, they're lying to me. That's fake news. The entire cast went to a casting call hoping to be extras and ended up with the lead roles. <sighs> that tells you something right there. Uh, yeah. the, the director, Claudio Fragoso, and his wife, Rossella Drury, only spoke Italian. And their screen and wrote the, a lot of Italian names. And, and, <laughs> they wrote the screenplay with very poor English. So when the actors were reading it, they tried to say, can we just ad lib it to kind of make it sound a little bit more natural? No. They had to read the lines as written. Good times. <laughs> uh, this might be the better part. You <laughs> He, the director, is still angry about the film's poor reception. He crashed. He crashed a cast reunion Q and A, and he was escorted out of the room by security. And he heckled the cast from the hallway, calling them liars and dogs, screaming in Italian. That's fabulous. Yep, I'm, uh, liking, I'm liking it already. I'm liking the movie. I've changed my mind. The guy. The guy who played the father, George Hardy, in his audition, he, all he did was act out his now famous line, you can't piss on hospitality, in front of nine smoking Italians. <laughs> nine smoking Italians who did not speak English and just hired him because they liked his energy. Yep. And he looked very American. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see. What else? The, there's one actor who wears a yellow shirt with a logo during the first half of the movie, but they lost the shirt. So they had to put him in a different uh, yellow shirt with no logo for the second half. There's no explanation as to why this is. Very How upsetting. About the, the explanation is you don't have to wear the same shirt for the entire <laughs> amount of time the movie takes place. How you have that? to. It's a rule. <laughs> um the co-writer, Rosella Drudy, who's the director's wife, wrote the got the idea for the movie after several of her friends became vegetarians at the same time. So essentially, the goblins in the movie are her vegetarian friends. Mm-hmm. There you go. They did look a little bit like Donatella Versace. The during a special screening in New York, the cast members said that during production they had serious doubts about how the movie would work. The entire crew spoke only Italian except for the costume designer who translated the director's directions to the actors. So the costume. Question. Yes. Why didn't they just shoot this in Italy? I don't know. These are important <laughs> questions. <Okay>. Uh, <laughs> the American VHS cover features an artwork consisting of a little boy with what appears to be a troll doll being chased down a dark corridor by a werewolf brandishing an axe. Neither the, <laughs> neither the boy nor the werewolf appear in the film. And as mentioned before, no trolls or appear troll either. <laughs> and no d troll dolls. No troll doll or just trolls. Very upsetting. Uh, <laughs> good Lord. The infamous yeah. oh my God scene has been viewed on YouTube over 7.1 million times as of February 2020. What's the oh my God scene? The popcorn? No. There's a scene where the guy, okay, remember the guy tackled the girl in the forest because she was running away from the trolls and they escape into the troll queen's room. She quickly, turned. the girl quickly turns to mush. And when that happens, the camera zooms in on the guy's face and he goes, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, dead, lifeless eyes. Uh, let's see. The I, I said this to you off camera. I'm going to say it again. The costume designer who did the translating is <laughs> the star 
of the Italian Emmanuel movies from the 70s oh. and the 80s. You remember her. Let me tell you exactly what her name is. But I, ha- I, have, I have heard of the movies. I've never seen them. Yeah, her name is Laura Gemser. She is the star. She is known for Black Emmanuel. She is the violence in a woman's prison. Uh, Emmanuel around the world. And something called Endgame. Bronx Lotta Finale. You know it, don't you? A lot of crazy Italian softcore. So, so she was the she was the she was the costume designer who ingeniously decided to put burlap sacks on our little uh, goblin characters, uh, and the translator for the entire Italian crew, and a fine actress is that. So that's fantastic. They spent all the money flying everybody over from Italy, basically. Basically, uh, let's. I was gonna say, let's talk about the cast. I don't know what there is to say other than for most of them, this was their only thing that they ever did. <laughs> Shocking. Good enough. There you go. Yeah, that's it's not, it's not even worth going through. Yeah, they did not much. So, there you go. Good times. Let's uh... all I'm thinking about is the director sh- crashing and being dragged out, calling everyone dogs. I love that. <laughs> Liars, and dogs. What are we- why don't we review the documentary? Wouldn't that be funny? That would be fun. Well, I've talked to you that there's that. There's also the documentary for Island of Dr. Moreau. We have to check out as well. All Good right. stuff. All right. Uh, let's talk about our rating, shall we? Troll 2 currently has 5% on Rotten Tomatoes. I guess for years it had 0%. And only recently, people started to enjoy it in kind of a uh, ironic you and, way. You and, and five other people. Audience score is forty four percent. I can't explain it. Still, still an F, no matter how you how you rate it. Let's talk about the top critics. There is three. There are three top critics. Uh, none I'm familiar Janet with. Maslin. John, Janet Maslin. Janet Maslin, exactly. Pauline Rick Kale. Reed. Rex Reed, Roger Ebert, J.R. Jones of the Chicago Reader gave it one out of four. It says, Troll 2 is bad. Very, very bad. The script is stupid. <laughs> the acting is wooden. The special effects are laughable. The vintage 80s synthesizer score is cheesy. So there you go. Fantastic. Uh, Doug Broad of Entertainment That's Weekly. Nice. Go ahead. That's very concise. I yeah. hate like the Janet Maslin where she raves about it and then gives it one star. I mean, <laughs> is it don't. good or is it bad? I'm confused. You don't want to hurt anybody's feelings? Don't try to trick us, D- Janet Maslin. No. Liar. Doug Broad of Entertainment Weekly says, taking off in its own entirely misguided direction. It tells the story of an average... Not to mention lousy acting American family that vacations in a town infested with Marty Allen clones who cause folks to sweat green chlorophyll and to turn into trees. Who's Marty Allen? Does that name mean anything to you? I'm going to ask, is it a Canadian uh, small person? <laughs> Will you quit throwing the poor Canadians under the bus? They have nothing to do Dude, with this. Marty Allen. I'm looking at that. Mar- not Marty Feldman. No. Marty Allen. Star of Night Gallery. You know him, don't you? Last what of the, the Secret hell? Agents. He's a, I guess he's a weird looking dude, is what they're trying to say. Oh, there he is. He does kind of look trollish. Anyway, you can Google him, ladies and gentlemen, if you're so inclined. Aaron, what is your rating he for Troll 2? In, in, in 1922, this would be relevant if you were there, uh, if you were born when the Kaiser was still kicking it. That's a dated reference, even for us. <laughs> Go ahead. You what's your rating? Me? Your rating, damn it. Oh, my God. Uh, I give it one healthy pint glass full of steamy hot uh, troll milk <laughs> out of a million. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hate it as much behind, as you did. The behind the scenes story gets a five out of five. The actual show 
is rated below room. Below room. I can see that. You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Oh, we can um, talk about that. I will give it 1.5 out of 5 <laughs> uh, corn cobs in the mouth. Let's just say that and leave it at that. Um, it is not, a, it's not good. Enough said, exactly. It's not a good movie. It isn't. Uh, occasionally you'll find it mildly amusing at how horrible it is. I didn't, I'll tell you this though. I didn't find it boring. Did you find it boring? I found it boring. I, I think maybe if I was uh, in the, my 20s and it was on at three in the morning, I just uh, returned from the bar or I have some altered states. I'm not sure if I would find it hilarious or it would just be the final thing that put me over into the coma. That would, that would be the final straw. The other? Now, make no, no mistake. No, I fell asleep no, multiple no, times no. watching it. <laughs> Yes, I, I fell asleep. To rewind it all th- a full thirty minutes to figure out what happened because I kept thinking, "Oh, I just fell asleep the last five minutes." No, I kept having to rewind it and rewind it and rewind it. Now, is it as bo- uh, boring as Silver Bullet? No, I would say it's more- whoa. Wh- okay, <laughs> I thought you were going to compliment it. No, you're not. No. <laughs> Give it a second I shot. Silver, I silver bullet. I complimented silver bullet. Well, that's which something. Which I at also least. fell asleep in. I fell asleep in all these movies because that's I'm basically a narcoleptic <laughs> at this age. Very upsetting. You just start the movie in bed around midnight on a work night. Is that what you do? Pretty much. You try to get through as much as I can before <laughs> before sweet oblivion takes me. Anywho. <laughs> We learned that Olivia <laughs> is not sweet. <laughs> wah, wah, not wah. Tom Cruise is waiting there for you. You're telling me. So thank you very much. Go to our page on Twitter at the podcast TW Die. Go to our page on Facebook at the podcast that wouldn't die. Aaron, are we on Instagram? We're on the gram. And we are, in fact, get this, the podcast that wouldn't die. Don't forget those underscores, ladies and gentlemen. You can also don't, email don't us. DM your porno videos because I'm not going to click on it, nor am I going to hand you my credit card. What about and videos from nice, Emmanuel in space? No, and all those nice men from India who want to send me the pictures of yourself and your friends with your shirts off, I'm not going to respond. I'm just gonna You're not feeling that. it. Not okay. So. The podcast e- does not respond to those kinds of solici- solicitations. We're not feeling that, literally and figuratively. <laughs> uh, so there you have it. You can email us at the podcast that wouldn't die at Gmail. Gmail. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere the finer podcasts are available. So don't forget to like, share, rate, and review if you will. Aaron. What other social media do you not want to receive DMs on from strange men around the world? If you can't say it in public, you probably don't need to say it to me. But I'm on the Twitsker. I'm the Cult of Aaron. I'm on the Insta. I am the Cult of Aaron. I'm also Don't Feed the Pigeon. And and literally, I have three other... Uh, Instagram accounts I couldn't figure out how to delete that are dormant. So they're out there floating around. Uh, I had this grand vision that I was going to have a different Instagram account for all these different topics. And then I realized that's quite the burden. Uh, I am, you can buy art from me. I'm on artsy Aaron Doherty. I'm on first dibs, Aaron Doherty. Uh, Follow me on there buy expensive art and that will bring me much pleasure to take your money. Thank you. Next week, we'll be discussing (laughs) the horror classic Phantom of the Paradise directed by Brian De Palma with Paul Williams in all of his glory. Uh, How can you watch this? You ask. Is that the one with nuts? That's uh, a kiss at the Phantom of the Park or something like that. 
Oh, now I'm disappointed. I'm not quite as excited as I was. I thought it was Paul Williams of the Love Boat th- uh, fame, King of the 70s. It yeah. meets Kiss. That's what I thought was no. going on. Here. <laughs> That's Paul not what's Vincent happening Riley at all. In this. Paul Lynn will be there as well. The, the, entire, the entire cast of Match Game. There you go. Good times. How can you watch Phantom of the Paradise? Sadly, you got to cough up. What? No? Jeff f***ing Bezos, you can suck my dick. I am so tired of sending you money every week. It's all corn cob related. Uh, anywho, yeah, it's like three ninety nine on pretty much any place you want to go. Amazon. Yeah, it's not even on good the, stuff. the Tubi, the, uh, the, I can't even remember all the names of these obscure free-to-watch uh, channels. Uh, three it's very upsetting. Nine. Are Is you out of your mind? Isn't it enough that I paid $20 to watch that wretched version of Cyrano de Bergerac? Ugh. It is not, clearly. <laughs> So check that out. Send us your comments, questions, anything else you want to say about Phantom of the Paradise or anything you want to say about Troll 2. Good times. So thank you very much. And yes, I'm taking note of people who make these suggestions and I will be judging you harshly. So think twice. Oh, for sure. Give me suggestions. But I'm going to know your soul after I watch these bullshit movies. <laughs> we've we've been hammered before with Saturn 3 and Prince of Darkness. The list goes on and on. Sweet Jesus. Oh. Anyway, have a good one. I don't know. <laughs> Later. Later, skaters. And just like I tell the kids, I ain't your DJ. <laughs>